I'm going to show you the different parts of an industrial straight sewer and talk about their various functions. At the back of the machine table is a thread stand and this is where you place your reel of thread and then the thread must be brought up and passed through one of these holes here. Please uh, don't pull and uh, turn the metal arm at the top to thread it from the back. Uh, there is no need uh, to do this and the metal arm is actually becoming damaged on many of these stands um, and cracking. So what you can do instead is you just bring the thread up and you can place it through this um, hanging metal ring here. You can uh, thread it through there. Or alternatively, you can just thread it in from the front of one of the other holes and bring it down to the machine from there. So in this case, I'm just going to thread it through there because it is very easy. Um, and then the, the thread will then come down onto the machine. Now, depending on what you're doing, you'll be threading it in, in different areas. To wind a bobbin, the thread gets passed through this um, pole here, this metal pole. It then comes over into this, this tension disc here, and there's a series of holes that it passes through, and then in through these two tension plates here. And then this section here is where you put the bobbin um, and you, this is the lever that engages the bobbin winder. So that's what all of that there is. This here is the machine screen. So when I turn the power on, um, the machine will switch on and there are various various um, things and buttons on here. Um, over here we have our um, speed. Um, so by, by pressing the arrows I can reduce the speed that the machine sews and I can increase it. So depending on what you're doing you may want to reduce that. If you're winding a bobbin of course you'll want it to do that quickly so you might have it up on full. When you're sewing something tricky you might want the machine to go slower so you might slow that down. We have a series of um, options here which uh, don't really get used for what we're doing in studio. Uh, it's more for a production. If you were wanting um, to program the machine to do a ba automatically do a back tack at the beginning and the end, you can program that in using those buttons. Um, I'm not going to go into that much because really um, it's for what we're doing in studio, it's not really necessary. Um, there's an option of um, cut off and not cut off. Of course, we don't want that on because we want the machine to automatically cut off um, as we're working. Um, when we're threading the machine, we have this uh, metal, um, metal stand here that the thread gets passed through. It then comes over to this um, disc here. What these discs do, um, they control the length of thread that's left in your needle after you have finished sewing and you heel back on your pedal to cut off your threads. Uh, so that's all that controls, the length of thread in the needle. Um, so what happens if you have that wound in too tight, there's too much pressure on the thread, it will tend to unthread the needle every time you heel back and cut off. We then come down to the needle tension discs and you shouldn't need to adjust that dial at all, um, only the technician should help you with that. There's two discs the thread passes in between before it comes up to this delicate spring at the top. Um, the thread passes over that. Down here we have um, a hook that the thread needs to pass around before it comes up into this guide here and then up to the take-up lever at the top. Um, so it's important when you're threading the machine that the take-up lever is at its highest position and you can do that just by turning the hand wheel on the side of the machine. The thread passes through that hole and then uh, it comes down to the thread guide on the side and then from there it goes straight down to uh, through this guide here at the front of the needle area and then lastly in through the hole on the needle um, clamp uh, there and it's important to thread it through that hole there's a little screw on the side where the needle gets threaded in but that hole at the front will just enable the thread to sit in nice and flat against the needle um, which which works really well 
So at the uh, front of the presser foot section, you can see the safety guard, um, which should prevent you from putting your fingers in um, and hurting yourself on the needle. Um, of course, this isn't completely foolproof. You can still uh, bring your fingers in from the side. Um, so ju just be very careful uh, when you're sewing. You should have all of your attention on what you're doing, focused on your work and um, what's happening with your hands. And um, should someone want to speak to you, you should stop sewing and um, not, not talk to them while you're sewing. Uh, this tends to be when, when accidents happen. Um, at the back of the machine we have this plastic um, lever. Um, it's probably, you can just make that out there. So that plastic lever lowers and um, raises the presser foot. Um, and you use that primarily when you're winding a bobbin to just get the presser foot up off the feed dog area. Um, and uh, so that you don't damage the feed dog when you're winding a bobbin. Uh, and when I say feed dog, I mean the jagged metal strips that move up and down uh, when the machine is sewing. They control the movement of the fabric under the presser foot um, at the correct speed uh, when you're sewing. I have a little door here which slides out. You might need to put your hand up underneath to get it to slide out and that shows you um, the bobbin area and I'll just lift the machine back so that you can get a better look at that. Um, we'll carefully lift the machine back, I'll turn it off first. And you can see in here that is where the bobbin case goes when we're threading the machine into this area here. And then the last thing we have this um, machine light now the machine lights are a little bit um, delicate in that any of the plastic areas can be cracked if you pull on the plastic. So it's really important if you're wanting to move the position of the light that you hold the um, machine light only by the metal section and twist it from these areas here. And be very careful. If you try and avoid um, pulling on the light um, using the plastic um, case here because it is um, some of the lights are becoming damaged and cracking on the plastic. On the end of um, the machine we have a hand wheel. Now when this is operated and there's an arrow showing you the direction that you should operate it, um, it, it controls the take-up lever which is attached to the needle and it brings the needle down into the work and up. So if you are needing to to take the needle out of the work, it can be done just using the hand wheel. Um, we, uh, at the front of the machine, we have our stitch length um, dial, and usually this is set on 2.5, which is an industry, industry standard stitch length uh, for constructing garments. Um, you can uh, also turn it up, if you're wanting to do uh, some top stitching, you might put that up to three. And if you're wanting to run some gathering, you might put it up to four, depending on your fabric. Um, you can go higher, um, and that's more getting into a gathering stitch. So normally it will be set on two and a half. Anything smaller is getting really too small to be able to see and unpick easily. Um, so there's really um, not usually a, a need for you to go any lower than two and a half. Um, this lever here is a reverse lever, but we also, to make it a bit easier than having to come over and, and engage that, we also have a button here, this little grey plastic thing, which also is a reverse button. And what it means is you can be sewing here and you can just use your thumb to reverse and it's quite an easy um, user-friendly option. Um, the other things we have, we have our power here on and off and we have under the machine we have a knee lift so, um, so that we can always have two hands to control our work um, we can lift the presser foot by engaging this knee lift and so it's just using your knee um, and that will lift the presser foot off your work and that makes it very easy. And then lastly we have the power pedal which is this pedal down the bottom here. 
um, you should be using your right foot on the power pedal and you should have it placed so that it's not hanging over the front too much. If you've got your foot hanging over the front, it is harder to control the speed of the machine. So just place your foot fairly evenly on the pedal um, and you should have your seat positioned so that you can um, so that you can position your foot at roughly 90 degrees and still access the knee lift without your leg sitting on that knee lift as you sew.